Hello, I'm Kazlyn Fields, and I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud focused on GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, as well as open source Kubernetes. In this episode of GK Essentials, we'll take a look at a key element of your GKE security posture, authorization or access management, specifically with regard to workloads. For a broader look at GK security, be sure to check out our Introduction to Securing Cluster Access video. When it comes to GKE, there are two distinct types or levels of authorization that you should be familiar with, Google Cloud IAM and Kubernetes Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC. The IAM in Google Cloud IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. Basically, IAM tools are what you use to set up rules for who can do what to which resources. The who in Identity and Access Management is going to be some form of account. And IAM allows you to set limits on what that account can do and with which resources in Google Cloud. You can design your own custom IAM roles, but for GKE, there are also several predefined Cloud IAM roles to quickly and relatively easily provide granular access to Kubernetes engine resources. The GKE Viewer role gives read-only access, as might be needed for auditing. The GKE Developer role is suited to developers and release engineers. It grants full control to all resources within a cluster. The GKE Admin role gives full access to clusters and the Kubernetes engine resources inside the clusters. Example users are project owners, system administrators, and on-call engineers. The GK Cluster Admin role is used to create, delete, update, and view clusters, but provides no access to Kubernetes resources within the cluster. You can also create a custom role in Google Cloud IAM to create a role with a more minimal set of permissions than those that are predefined. So Google Cloud IAM can be used to control Google Cloud users' access to the GK cluster and its related resources. For managing access to resources within the cluster, Kubernetes has its own similar concept, role-based access controls, or RBAC. Separate accounts are needed within the cluster to control cluster users' access. Just like with Cloud IAM, RBAC is the tool for configuring who can do what with which resources within the cluster. So Cloud IAM lets you manage who can do what to which resources at the cloud level controlling access to the Google Cloud Project, GK Cluster, and other resources like cloud storage. Kubernetes Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC, manages who can do what with which resources within the cluster on Kubernetes resources like deployments, persistent volumes, etc. But what if the thing you want to give permissions to isn't a user, but a workload running within Kubernetes? For cases where the who is a workload, both Google Cloud IAM and Kubernetes RBAC have a concept called a service account. At this point, it can get a bit confusing. There's something called a service account at both the cloud and Kubernetes level. A Kubernetes service account is part of your Kubernetes cluster, and it can be used to give a workload running within the cluster access to other parts of the cluster. Its scope is contained within the Kubernetes cluster. A Google Cloud service account is part of your Google Cloud project. The who of a Google Cloud service account can be a Google Cloud resource like a GKE cluster, which can be given permissions via IAM to access other cloud resources. So what if you have a situation where a workload running within GKE needs access to some other Google Cloud resource like BigQuery? To get permissions all the way from a workload within Kubernetes to other resources running in Google Cloud, in the most granular way possible, another concept is needed to tie the two service account concepts together. That concept is workload identity. Workload identity can be used to automatically connect a Google Cloud service account to a Kubernetes service account so that any workloads represented by the Kubernetes service account will have the access described by the GCP service account in order to use any Google Cloud APIs, products, or services that workload might need. Workload identity provides granular control, 
offering just the right permissions to a particular workload, rather than to, for example, a whole compute node or a whole cluster, which may have multiple workloads running on them that don't need the same level of access. You would configure workload identity using something similar to the two commands shown here. The first command at the top uses the gcloud tool to make a call to the GCP APIs to create a policy binding, granting the Kubernetes service account access to act as the associated Google Cloud service account. The second command at the bottom uses the kubectl tool to use Kubernetes APIs to annotate the Kubernetes service account with the name of the Google Cloud service account it will act as. These concepts can be a little confusing at first, but workload identity can help make access management for workloads running within your GK clusters much smoother and easier to manage. In this episode, we talked about managing access to resources at the cloud and cluster levels, and about simplifying access management for Kubernetes workloads via Google Cloud workload identity. With the concepts discussed in this video, we're confident you'll be on your way to building a GKE cluster that suits your needs. You can get started with GKE by visiting the Google Cloud Console and checking out the links below. And stay tuned for our next videos where we dive deeper into GKE topics.